cut. Harsha Upadhyay is Chief Investment Officer, Equity at Kotak Mutual Fund, and he's joining us now uh, as a market master today. Harsha, good to have you with us here, always on CNBC TV 18. Thanks for your time. Uh, <clears throat> Harsha, you know, the uh, rally has taken us to newer highs across the board, uh, but uh, with the, the earnings season uh, now in the uh, rearview mirror, what what which are the sort of segments or pockets you're getting very excited about that maybe uh, you know earnings are keeping pace with elevated growth expectations and where where are the disappointments according to you? Go on. Uh, good morning, Prashant. Uh, clearly, this earnings season has been better than the previous three quarters. I would say uh, if you look at just the Nifty uh, to begin with, uh, Nifty had given a earnings growth of about twelve percent uh, when you look at first three quarters, and this quarter. Uh, for all the results that have come until now, the number seems to be about 16% or so. So at the headline, it's not only better than the previous three quarters, but it is also a slightly better than the consensus expectations for this particular quarter. Uh, having said that, I would say that this has been driven mainly by financials and auto in terms of sectors at this point of time. Uh, rest of the manufacturing sectors, for example, have seen uh, 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 further dip in margins or continued uh, pressure on margins due to elevated uh, commodity inflation and have been uh, disappointing in terms of the results. But as you go ahead, we expect that uh, with the moderation in inflation, with the lag, there should be improvement in the profitability margin for various other sectors as well. So hopefully, uh, first and second quarter of next financial year, the trend should be uh, slightly better than what we have seen in the fourth quarter. So hopefully things should uh, pan out uh, uh, a little better in the next two quarters. <laughs> You've said the word hopefully at least five times and hope as we know is not a data point, right Harsha? Uh, things, uh, I mean, things are looking good, no two ways about that, but we, our market has its own challenges as well. Just wanted to point out that the stock of the moment in the broader market is Torrent Pharma. Ekta was telling us about that, how the numbers are looking quite good in the quarter gone by, almost a 20% growth on the top line, margins also picked up quite a bit. Uh, so, from this earnings season, Harsha, what stood out for you? The good, the bad, the ugly, where do you see both growth and valuation upside now? Uh, on the valuation, uh, Sonia, there is uh, nothing which is very, very attractive at this point of time. As we all know, markets have been trading at around fair value of uh, uh, fair valuation zone. So, to that extent, I would say more or less most sectors are also trading at either fair or slightly higher than fair valuations. Uh, but in terms of growth, there are many sectors which could probably give you better earnings growth than the market average as you go forward. Uh, already we have two sectors which have been uh, driving the overall earnings, which will continue to do well. The financials and the automobile sector, including auto ancillaries. As far as financials are concerned, maybe it will be lower than what we have seen in financial year 23 in terms of the growth numbers, but it will still be better than the overall market average. So to that extent, I think it will continue to remain an outperformer uh, in terms of earnings growth as well as uh, uh, possibly even stock performance. Uh, as far as uh, some of the manufacturing segments are concerned, uh, we, we still have not seen the benefit of uh, moderating inflation because many companies have uh, uh, probably held on to earlier inventory and used up that inventory in the previous quarter. As you get into June and September quarter, uh, we could probably see uh, a benefit of uh, lower commodity prices uh, flowing into profitability margins. So our guess is uh, sectors such as uh, uh, cement, uh, and the industrial should also benefit uh, with uh, lower commodity prices as we go forward. And um, <clears throat> more than anything, uh, the growth rates in these segments are also quite strong. I mean, uh, despite the uh, COVID hiccup and, and uh, the disruption that we saw in the economy, uh, these two segments have continuously seen a reasonable degree of strength in terms of demand. And uh, if you add to that uh, uh, improvement in uh, profitability margins going forward, uh, overall number should uh, should be much better for these sectors as well. Uh, as far as uh, segments which could probably continue to uh, remain subdued would be some of the global facing sectors uh, such as uh, IT, commodities, etc., where either the demand or the pricing would be under some sort of strain uh, given uh, where the global growth is headed. So to that extent, probably they, those sectors will continue to underperform in terms of earnings growth as compared to domestic segments. Harsha, hi, good morning, Surpi here. Uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on the uh, CapEx side of the market because that's where we've seen some pretty robust numbers from a lot of the capital goods companies, right? But then stock prices have also run up quite a bit. So what would your approach be uh, now to some of these names? 
Uh, we have turned a little cautious on this segment, not that we are underweight on the segment, but uh, we have not put much of our incremental flows into these segments, uh, given exactly the concern that you mentioned. Uh, some of the stocks have done really well in terms of the earnings growth. They've got very strong order books. Their execution remains uh, perfect. Uh, but, uh, but to an extent, the uh, valuation also discounts uh, some of this uh, improvement in, in the balance sheet as well as in terms of execution and the future uh, growth trajectory. So to that extent, uh, uh, you have to be more stock specific, even in the industrial segment, I would say, uh, as we have seen a rally in the market and a, and a bigger rally in this segment over the last uh, uh, few months. Uh, but overall, it, it, uh, it continues to be a segment where uh, growth is going to remain uh, quite, quite uh, strong. How about autos? How are you feeling about that space now? I ask because, uh, you know, the premium end of the market is doing very well, whether it's M&M, uh, you know, even auto ancillary, so many of them are doing quite well. Uh, what do you like in this space? What do you avoid? And is this a space where there is a structural uptrend or not quite yet? Uh, we believe that there is a structural uptrend. Uh, uh, we have seen uh, some new introductions in terms of new models, which have got uh, very good interest from customers. Uh, we also expect gross margins to expand from these levels, as I mentioned, for many other uh, manufacturing segments. Auto should also benefit from lower commodity prices uh, on the raw material side. There is definitely pricing strength for most of the manufacturers as demand continues to be quite strong. Uh, some of the other uh, uh, bottlenecks that the industry saw uh, in the past, for example, chip supply, etc., should also start to uh, kind of normalize. So overall, uh, we, we continue to believe that demand uh, will remain strong and hopefully uh, margin should also inch up from these levels. And, and, uh, and if you look at even auto ancillaries, I think after a long, long time, most of these auto ancillaries are also sitting on uh, good expectations in terms of uh, order flows and also valuations are quite reasonable. Uh, there is a bit of under ownership in auto ancillaries, according to us. Uh, that could also drive overall uh, performance of auto ancillaries. So, uh, broadly, we are uh, positive on both auto and auto ancill ancillaries. And uh, in ancillaries uh, across the board, it's not one specific segment, but we do have uh, many plays in our portfolio. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Uh... Arsha, we leave it there. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate you joining in uh, with that perspective. Uh, and uh, thanks as always uh, for uh, coming on uh, the uh, program.